Let us have a look on a connection between nerves and skeletal muscle fibers. These are called motor and plates and uh, these other sides where action potential is transferred from nerve from a nerve fiber to muscle. The nerve fiber that comes from a neuron body is called axon and it ends with a dilated part. So this is the axon of a motor neuron. The action potential travels along the axon. It comes to this region, to the terminal part. And the terminal part contains vesicles with substance called neurotransmitter. So these are synaptic vesicles. with neurotransmitter and this case the neurotransmitter name is acetylcholine there are also mitochondria here producing energy for many active transport processes that occur here. Uh, the action potential triggers release of the neurotransmitter outside into a space called synaptic cleft. So the Acetylcholine is released. Acetylcholine is released. And it binds the receptors that are on the surface of the muscle fiber. We know it has multiple nuclei on the periphery. It has this striation pattern. So here are, here are acetylcholine receptors binding the acetylcholine. These folds are called junctional folds. And this is the sarcolemma, which works here as, this, as a post-synaptic membra membrane. Of course, you might call this connection between the nerve fiber and muscle fiber a synapse. Let's discuss uh, an important term. It's a motor unit. A motor unit in the human body is the one axon of a motor neuron and all the muscle fibers that are innervated by that particular axon.
The point here is that there are muscles in the human body with small motor unit, where most individual muscle fibers have their own independent innervation, they have their own accents. This allows for very precise movements, such, in, such as uh, in the muscles of the eyeball. Other muscles in the human body, such as the latissimus dorsi or the gluteal muscles, they have large motor units. One axon provides, with its collateral branches, innervation of, uh, of many muscle fibers which uh, contract at the same time. This allows for less muscle coordination or precise movements. Let's discuss another structure called muscle spindle. Uh, the Latin word for, mus for spindle is fusus. We will need that in the terminology as you will see. And it's kind of a uh, stretch receptor. That is part of a proprioception sense, which informs the central nervous system of your body about the condition of your muscles and tendons. So let's consider the spinal cord. The gray matter of which has the dorsal horns and ventral horns. Here will be the central canal. And we already know that the regular muscle fibers that generate the force are innervated by motor neurons. These are the skeletal muscle fibers, and they are innervated by motor neurons that are located in the anterior horns. So these neurons are sending axons that end with the motor end plate. So this is a motor neuron called alpha. motor neuron. It sends a, a projection called axon, a process called axon. It ends with a motor and plate. On a skeletal muscle fiber. However, we have also different motor neurons that are sending their axons to some smaller skeletal muscle fibers that are inside sensory organs called muscle spindles. So if this is a muscle spindle, as a stretch receptor that is both in series as well as in parallel with the working skeletal muscle fibers, this skeletal muscle fiber, which is inside the spindle, Latin term for which being the fuses, is called intrafusal muscle fiber. While the regular working and force generating muscle fiber is called therefore extra fusal muscle fiber because it's not inside, it's outside the muscle spindle. Uh, this neuron that innervates the intrafusal muscle fiber is called gamma motor 
neuron this is its axon and moreover the intrafusal muscle fibers are wrapped around by sensory nerve fibers that carry the information about the contraction back into the central nervous system and these are sensitive processes of neurons sitting in the spinal ganglia and the axons of these neurons are entering the spinal cord uh, via the dorsal roots into the dorsal horns and they can interpolate on various motor neurons they can interpolate to the other side or to different segments etc so this is a, a sensory neuron uh, within the spinal ganglion and this is its dendrite that carries information from the periphery towards the nerve cell body and this is the axon that enters the dorsal horns because uh, we have got the posterior or dorsal horns of the spinal gray matter that are sensitive and these are the anterior horns that are motor horns, anterior horns of the of the gray matter spinal. Gray matter, right? So actu actually while the gamma motor neurons by um, uh, are modulating the sensitivity or the pre-stretch of these intrafusal muscle fibers they modulate their sensitivity how, how sensitive they are to, to perceive the contraction or relaxation caused by the extrafusal muscle fibers and the CNS is constantly being informed about that which is important part of a process called proprioception